You fly away from Earth at a safe distance in your super modern spaceship, and then BAM! You travel faster than the speed of light in interstellar space. How cool! The light from thousands of stars rushes past you. A few minutes, and you're on the other side of the Milky Way and going to work. Such travel has long been common for humans. For you are a member of the human civilization that has conquered the entire galaxy. But it took almost 90 million years to get there. So how did we achieve this? It's like a computer game. In the beginning, we had a fleet of three motherships that could travel at 310 miles per second. Each of them had 10 colonization pads. The ship could undock a pad and drop it on the desired planet. We also had two speed ships that traveled twice as fast but could only colonize one planet. Each colonized planet could send one new ship on an expedition. So humanity was able to spread across the galaxy in 90 million years. Most of that time was spent flying from star to star. So the main problem of colonization is speed. Year 2021. Our spaceships can now fly at about 24,850 miles per hour. That's enough speed to travel from New York to Los Angeles in less than 4 minutes. But a trip to neighboring planets like Mars still takes about 7 months. The nearest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri, is 4.2 light years away. That means light, the fastest thing in the universe, takes 4.2 years to get there from the Sun. It would take our rocket 73,000 years to get there. That's longer than an advanced human civilization has existed. And our galaxy, the Milky Way, is 105,000 light years wide. So even traveling at the speed of light would take forever. So naturally, humanity came up with other ways to travel. Let's move into the future and imagine that we've solved this problem. We started accelerating with microscopic probes propelled by a directional laser beam from Earth. This made it possible to reach speeds of 25% of the speed of light, still very slow. The problem was that nothing that has mass can travel at the speed of light. So we moved on to the Alcubierre drive study. This method doesn't involve moving from point A to point B, but instead compressing the space between those points. Here's a piece of checkered paper. Imagine that you need to travel three squares to your destination. Instead of moving in a straight line as fast as possible, we squeeze these squares so that our spaceship is at point B. Now we unsqueeze them back. Space is normalized and we've traveled, in fact, standing still. This is how the Alcubierre drive works. It compresses space in front of the spaceship and expands it behind its tail. So, theoretically, an Alcubierre drive spaceship can move at any speed, even faster than the speed of light. But the amount of energy needed to do this is enormous, and it could be compared to the mass energy of the entire planet of Jupiter. So, while some scientists were working to improve the Alcubierre drive, others were looking inside the most mysterious object in the universe, a black hole. A black hole is something so heavy that it attracts even light and won't let it go. Imagine a circular trampoline. This is our space-time. We put a basketball in its center. The trampoline sags a little bit. Now all the objects we put on the trampoline will roll toward the basketball. That's how gravity works. But if you roll the golf ball past the basketball, it has a chance of getting out of this funnel. Now put a heavy bowling ball in the center of the trampoline. The trampoline sags even more. Now the golf ball will inevitably fall into the funnel with the bowling ball with no chance of escape. That's how a black hole works. And some scientists believe there may be a wormhole at the heart of a black hole. It's a shortcut between point A and point B in the universe. Back to our piece of paper. Instead of moving straight ahead, we fold the piece so that point A is right above point B. Now we make a hole in the paper and move to point B. We unfold it back and voila, you've arrived at your destination. So there's a theory that if a spaceship enters the black hole's gravitational field and withstands the incredible stress there, it can exit to any other point in the universe which that wormhole led to. It might even be another galaxy, or even a parallel universe. Well, our research was successful, and now, looking at a map of the Milky Way, we can get to absolutely anywhere. All that remains is to choose the right place to colonize. There are about a billion stars. Around each of them are planets possibly suitable for life. So we need to narrow down the list. First, we look for relatively young stars, almost like our sun. Near them, a human colony can potentially live for a long time. After that, when a star gets old, it begins to expand and turn red. In the last stages of its life, it can absorb all the planets around it and then explode with such force that the light from the explosion can be seen dozens of light years away. 
Secondly, the candidate for a human colony must be in the habitable zone of the star. It's a sweet spot, not too far away from and not too close to the star, so that it's not too cold or too hot there. In other words, water on the planet must exist in liquid form. Also, the candidate planet must have a solid surface so that we can live on it. Another important factor is the size of the planet. If it's too big, its gravitational force will press on us. It'll be harder for us to jump, walk, and lift weights on this planet because we're used to the Earth's gravity. But if the planet is too small, we'll feel like real strongmen there. We'll be able to jump high and lift large weights. But then our muscles will lose tone and our health will deteriorate. So we're looking for a planet about the size of Earth. Altogether, we have about 100,000 star systems that fit our parameters, so we start exploring and colonizing. And here's our first target. We've named this planet New Home. Hmm, clever. We fire up our faster-than-light engine, and bam, we're there! Even though this planet fits all our criteria, it's still hard to call this place home. Desert landscapes with lots of craters and canyons. We'll have to work hard to make this place look like Earth. The terraforming phase of the planet is about to begin. That means we're going to change the climate and the atmosphere here. We need about 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen so we can breathe here without spacesuits. So we're launching air plants. Other plants will produce water. We're also building power plants and a plant to produce fuel for our spacecraft. Last but not least, food extraction. Once everything is ready, the colony here can exist on its own. And after several centuries, this planet will be developed and populated enough to send an expedition to colonize neighboring worlds. So for many millions of years, humanity has been weaving its web in the Milky Way. From one planet to another, we've colonized our galaxy. Humanity is now not only multiplanetary, but also interstellar. The next goal is to make us an intergalactic species. Here's our Milky Way. Zoom out. This is the local group of galaxies. Each one contains millions of stars, candidates for colonization. We have to travel 5 million light years to get there. Zoom out again. Virgo Supercluster. There are about 100 clusters of galaxies similar to our own. Zoom out again. Billion light years from our home. Neighboring superclusters. Now each galaxy looks like a little dot, and there are thousands and millions of them. Zoom out even more. 14 billion light years from Earth. This is our observable universe. There are about 2 trillion galaxies. Even at a thousand times the speed of light, it would take us billions of years to colonize even 1% of the stars here. But it's not over yet. There's a cold spot on the map of the observable universe. Some scientists think it's a scar from a collision of our universe with a neighboring one. They say the universes could be like bubbles, each containing trillions of galaxies. Once such bubble crashed into ours, and its gravitational force ripped clusters of galaxies out of our universe. If this is true, then parallel universes do exist. Then we have truly endless possibilities for exploration, finding new worlds for humanity, and contact with extraterrestrial civilizations. Hmm, sounds like fun.